what is this camp all about? Uh, this camp is actually just to give back to my community, to my hometown. Um, it's just, you know, back in the day, I, you know, had the chance to experience camps and I had a chance to, you know, go see how it affected kids' life. And I want to affect the kids' life around here in my hometown. I mean, I just don't want to be the only person out of my town just to be, you know, go to Auburn or, you know, Alabama, places like that. That I just want to show these kids that, you know, your dreams can come true if you work hard for it. You come out here and you put in the effort, you put in the work, that, you know, anything can come true for you. Not everyone's going to be a professional football player. Mm -hmm. But how important is it to instill in them that, that you know, whatever you do decide to do, you can do. It's just, you know, you got to come out here and put hard work in and you got to put effort into it. I mean, the campus, you know, come out here to put in, you know, put in the work, showing the effort, but we also want to make it a learning experience. Like, you know, teach the kids like lessons in life about, you know, you got to work what you can get. You got to do what you got to do. You got to make, you got to put in the hard work to get it. And that's something I want to teach into the young kids. I mean, we're going to have, you know, talking experiences, you know, during after, you know, the middle of the camp. And, you know, I just want to see where their heads at. I just want to see, you know, we got to put school first always put school first no matter what and you always got to have God in your life and you have to make everything work out for you and you got to make sure that you're on the right path to making your dreams come true if you could give one piece of advice to yourself when you were maybe 10 12 years old what would it be I would say just work more harder in school and you know put more effort into being a football player I mean Every sport I played, I played basketball, baseball, football. I mean, I just had to put in max effort. I mean, I never knew, you know, being 12. I mean, it was just a dream to me, you know, just to play where I'm at now. It's just, you know, I got, I just had to make it to the reality. I, I just had to come out here and work hard work. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, I sit, I sit at home and think like, it's, it was so, it was just so realistic to know that where I came from, just a small town in Moody, Alabama. And to see where I am now with the Houston Texans and actually playing over 49 games at Auburn, it was just, you know, just a dream, you know, at first. You know, you think about it, and then I just turned into a reality with hard work and effort. So. You talked about the Texans. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously fans around here, they love to keep up with their, their former Auburn Tigers in the yeah. NFL. What, what's the transition been like? It's just a, it's a hard transition. I mean, to say – Coming from the offense I did back at Auburn and then going into the NFL kind of offense, I mean, the playbook is much longer than you really think. I mean, it's thick. You think you come in there and you think you're like, I'll come back home from practice, come back from the hotel from practice, and I'm studying from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock just the playbook in general. It's just crazy things like that. I mean, I know I came from a powerhouse with the SEC and everything. I mean, any school, any conference is a powerhouse, no matter what it is. But just coming from the SEC, it's just – it was kind of like the people are still the same size, but I mean, you're just grown men. You know, you're going against a grown man. Like everyday practice, I'm used to seeing a Carl Lawson, which who is a, who he is, Carl Lawson. But now I'm seeing a J.J. Watt. I mean, that's two different beasts in one animal. So it's just it's just a fun experience of it. But I mean, I'm just having fun with it. I'm just going with it, and I'm just loving life right now. J.J. Watt is crazy as he seems. He's not crazy. He's just a hardworking guy. I mean, he's, I, he's a hundred percent every day. I mean, he, I don't, I can't really tell when he's hurt when he's not hurt. I wish, that's a great thing. I love to be on his team and not be on the opposite team. So, that's just a, that's a good blessing for me to have just to be on his team and you know I have to go against. I go against him to practice every day and I feel the wrath where everybody else goes through before on a Sunday. But I mean, it's 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 a good thing though. <laughs> So you, you mentioned the offense that you came from, from mm -hmm. Auburn, mm -hmm. going to the NFL. We, we've seen Coach Malzahn's offense. When it's clicking, it, it's borderline unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when Cam was there, when uh, Nick Marshall was running stuff. Mm -hmm. But then we see it struggle at times, too. Mm -hmm. what, what's the key to that offense succeeding? The key to the offensive season is everybody working as a unit. I mean, you you see that some people might think, oh, yeah, they're going too slow, we're going too slow. It's just the defense is getting us the look that we don't really want. I mean, it's just it takes time to, you know, once we get that first first down, we're going to we're going to go fast with it. But I mean, it's it's just a lot of work in the makings in that offense. And I mean, it's a great offense. Don't get me wrong. I love the offense I used to be in in Auburn and everything. So. I mean, I never complained nothing about it. I mean, it got me more in shape than I was then. So, I mean, I, I loved everything about it. It's just, you know, it's more complex than the NCAA it is right now than the NFL. I mean, more NFL, you're more pro-style huddle. But, you know, I'm not used to that in the NFL. So, like, when we had our first practice and it was like huddle, I'm still at the line. I'm like, 
okay, uh, I, I'm not used to this. So it's just it's things like that to get the defense off their toes and everything. So it's, I mean, I feel like this year is going to be a good year for him. Yeah, Carl was hurt a lot last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God willing, he'll be healthy all yeah. this year. What do you, when you look at the Auburn Tigers, the 2016 version, you know, what, what do you think right now? I see a hardworking team. I see a, I see a want a hungry want to team, which which I saw back in 2013. I mean, I went down there just for a visit and I could see it was a Saturday and it was a full workout. I mean, just, it was not even coach related, anything like that. You can't have coaches at the practice, but it was just a player workout. And then I saw 110% effort there. So that's what, what I saw back in 2013, what we had. And I saw it definitely in 2010 when Cam and them were there. So, I mean, I was red shirt that year and I had to sit back and look. And then when I played in 2013, I saw the same thing in Cam, but when I went back and saw it, I could see just similar pieces to the puzzle there. So I just can't wait to see what they put on the field this year. Auburn is kind of, they've had this weird like last seven, eight years mm -hmm. where like they'll really struggle one year, but then the yeah. next year they're in the national championship. Game. Yeah. I mean, you saw that firsthand. Mm -hmm. do, do you get that same sense? I, I, I do a little bit. I can't say 110% I do, but I, I get it because I don't want to, put in people's mind, yeah, like, yeah, I feel it, and be totally wrong and, and everything. But from the feeling I had when I went down there, I, I can feel it. I mean, the support down there is just amazing. The Auburn family is always great. So, I mean, it's that's what we need behind us. I mean, in 2013, we, you know, coming from 2012, the terrible season we had, and the fans stuck behind us, which was a huge 110% part of our success in 2013 is what the Tigers would need this year in 2016. I mean, it's it's clear. I mean, once you have that good fan support and the family and you feel like you want to, the players will go out there and want to play for you. So, I mean, it's just going to be the want to out of them, the hungerness out of them, and hopefully they'll have a good season this year. And then finally, I mean, we've talked about Auburn, the Texans, mm -hmm. camp. I mean, do you ever have to just kind of pinch yourself? Like, I'm coming back to, to my hometown <laughs> as an NFL player to teach, you know, the, the youngest, ver the younger versions of me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really don't come back and, you know, have a big head. I mean, I don't want to come back and be like, yeah, I'm just an NFL player walking around town. I just, I don't, I keep my t keep to myself. I'm still going to be Chad Slade. I mean, I was a Chad Slade when I was back in Moody. So I want to be the same person as I was here. And I mean, me coming out here teaching them that it's going to be a great experience for them to know when you get to that point in time and you, you made it in life and you know you doing what you want to do you do what you dream of you don't have to come back and you know slap it in somebody's face you know you just come out here and act like the same person you are you don't have to come around here and throw money and do everything like that you just come back here be humble give back to your community give back to the youngsters of your community because that's those are the people behind you those are the people going to grow up behind you and that's going to be the people that carry on your legacy on so it's going to be a good thing for me to teach these kids to you know continue the legacy on the movie don't you know don't sit back and think oh yeah i can't do it oh no i can't do it you can just hard work continue stay in school put god first and everything will be just fine